All right, guys, last night I saw Happy Death Day to you, and I want to talk about the ending and the major hole, the biggest hole that I feel that was left in that movie. And if you've seen the movie, I'm pretty sure you feel the same exact way. So as you know, Tree is left in um, an alternate dimension, and it was a, a big step away from, I think, the slasher sort of film that we got from the the first movie the first movie was just all about her dying over and over again who's the killer we have to figure out who the killer is second movie was more of you know quantum physics albert einstein i needed a notepad and making graphics and charts and i was like wait a second alternate dimensions I didn't realize this was so intense, went super sci-fi, and all of a sudden I felt like I was watching a very different movie while having straight up deja vu because it was the same scenes over and over again. So I thought that was weird, right? It was the same exact movie as the first movie, yet it had this uber sci-fi vibe to it. I was with it. I was there with them. I was like, I'll go on this journey with you. Different genre somehow. Same movie, different genre. Same scenes, different angle. Okay. However, we get to the end of the movie and, you know, they use Sissy, their little machine, to sort of um, break time again to try to close their loop. And when they did that to help Tree bring her to the other dimension, she never met a second version of herself. Meanwhile, when we were introduced to the original killer, the first time we ripped the mask off, what did we see? We saw uh, the, 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 boy, the scientist who created the, the invention face to face with another version of himself because when they originally ripped the time, you know, space continuum or whatever we want to call it, what happens is the rule, the science rule was that when you go over from one dimension to the next, you end up meeting your counterpart. But then for some reason when Tree did it, she there was no version of herself in her new dimension. Why? Like big, 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 big miss there, right? That's the part that really confused me the most. I mean, how come when we saw Tree um, sort of going from one dimension to the next, she had no worry about finding another version of herself and the more time than you and i are in the same dimension together there's going to be repercussions we can't be here together you don't understand he's going to cause so many issues we can't do this no that just didn't happen for her 45 minutes of her being in another dimension was no issue whatsoever her main problem was just solving the murder like movie one Meanwhile, they had a real opportunity there in the beginning to set it up where um, there would, could have been two dangers for a tree in the new dimension. It could have been, we have to solve the murder. Actually, it could have been three. We have to solve the murder. We have to have her have this real life dilemma. Does she want to deal with a life without her mother where she could actually stay here and be with her mother? That's a real personal dilemma that she has to solve. And she has to completely avoid her second self. But it didn't happen. And they didn't say why it didn't happen. And that's just like, that's like writers in a room going, gosh, it's going to be really hard to write around. Like when she goes and has lunch with her parents, they'll bring up stuff about, oh, we saw you at breakfast this morning. And then she's going to have to skirt around that. That's going to be a real challenge, guys. And then somebody in the back was like, let's not have her have a second version of herself in the dimension. And they were like, let's go with that. Much easier. Saved ourselves six months of budget. I don't know. I just thought that was weak. So by the time the movie ended, and then also, you know, all the Back to Future references, when they gave that that extra scene at the very end when like the men in black came or whatever we're going to call those people at the very end like that extra extra scene at the end i kept telling my cousin who i was in the movie with 
I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. They're going to have a cameo right now, right now. Cameo, Back to the Future cameo. It's happening. This is it. Wait for it. Wait for it. We're going to see the DeLorean. Something's happening. I was like, I was like revving up in my seat. I was like, this is it. They've been doing Back to the Future the whole movie. This is it. This is the moment. And there was no moment. <laughs> and I was like, you missed it. You missed it. Right here, there should have been something. Something. You should have had somebody. Anybody, give me Buff or whoever. Give me somebody that played some. Give me the diner. Give me a waitress from the diner. Put somebody that was in the movie in that scene. Give me something. Give me somebody from that movie and put them in that scene. I can't believe you didn't do that. I was really upset. I was like hyping my cousin up. I was like, here it comes, here it comes. This is what I was talking about. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Scene ended. So I kind of was like upset about that. And then um, I actually went online and I read about, uh, I read some interviews from the director and they said that if it does well, if this movie does well, the third movie is going to be a completely different genre from the first and the second. So I was like, what is it going to be, a comedy? Like, what, what, what is it going to be? I'm very curious as to what they're trying to say. Because the first movie was slasher. The second movie is more sci-fi. What could the third possibly be? Is it haunted? No. I mean, I feel like they're, 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 they're sort of angled it into Men in Black. Or maybe it's going to be like Born Identity. Maybe they're going to angle it to be more like Born Identity. I, I'm not sure. I mean, I had a good time. For me personally, while we're talking about this, one of the funniest scenes was when the um, the roommate pretended to be the blind French woman. I thought that was really funny. I was like, okay, this is witty. And this is sort of like out of nowhere, left field. She's like, this is just coming out of nowhere. And we giggled. Like we were giggling in the theater. Everybody was laughing. I thought that was pretty funny. But the slasher parts, like it was really missing. She took it upon herself, the whole entire movie. And what you went in for, they didn't really give it to you. And instead, you know, I'm like trying to look at a whiteboard and I'm going, am I supposed to understand? No, I'm not because this is all science. Okay. Interdimensional, multidimensional, multi-universe. Okay. Am I going to get three college credits by the end of this <laughs> movie? Can, did I? Do I have a Regents diploma now that I've gone through this whole movie? I'm not sure. But at the end of it, I don't know. What do you guys think? Did you Were you totally turned off by that whole, like, where's the second character? Shouldn't there have been a second pack? That's my story. I loved all the, the um, supporting cast. I thought they were all really great. Everybody's great. I'm in love with the, the main character, Tree. I think she's, like, beautiful. She's, she looks like Blake Lively. She's gorgeous. She's, I, she's just... She's wonderful. I think she's a great actress. Um, she's a lot of fun. I love her facial expressions. I really enjoy watching her on the screen. I think she's a great um, addition to the movie. I'm not saying anything bad about any single person in the movie. Great cast. But um, where was her, the other one of her? I think that was a big, big miss. Big misstep for me. And uh, I'm curious to see what you guys, did you notice that? Did you care about that? Let me know, guys, in the comments below. Bye.